sisters and brothers, and to those who join us in worship at, through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus the Divine Word in Christ the King Mission Seminary, Quezon City. The Church celebrates today the memorial of St. Cornelius Pope and St. Cyprian Bishop Martyrs. Our Mass presider is Rev. Father Ronnie Crisostomo, SVD, Shrine Rector. Our Eucharistic celebration and devotion to the most sacred heart of Jesus will now begin. Please rise. Holy men shed their glorious blood for the Lord. They loved Christ in their life. They imitated him in their death and therefore were crowned in triumph. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome, dear friends, to our Eucharistic celebration on this day in which the Church celebrates the memorial of two saints, Saints Cornelius, Pope, and Cyprian, Bishop, both martyred in the third century, witnessing their faith to Christ. And uh, one of the the beautiful testimony of these two martyrs was their advocacy for the admission, readmission of Christians who were considered, who were not worthy of proclaiming uh, their faith uh, during persecution, the so-called the lapsed Christians. And uh, they were these two saints were uh, for their admission, giving them second chance to profess their faith. We thank God for such a, uh, a gift to His church, the saints. And we pray also for those who are hard up in their following of Christ to celebrate worthily this Eucharist, we ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who gave Saints Cornelius and Cyprian to your people as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs. Grant that through their intercession, we may be strengthened in faith and constancy and spend ourselves with, without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some among you 
say there is no resurrection of the dead. If there is no resurrection of the dead, then neither has Christ been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then empty too is our preaching, empty too your faith. Then we are also false witnesses to God, because we testified against God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise, if in fact the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, neither has Christ been raised, and if Christ has not been raised, your faith is vain. You are still in your sins. Then those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are the most pitiable people of all. But now Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hear, O Lord, a just suit. Attend to my outcry. Hearken to my prayer from lips without deceit. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me, hear my word. Show your wondrous mercies, O Savior of those who flee from their foes to refuge at your right hand. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. Hide me in the shadow of your wings, but I in justice shall behold your face. On waking, I shall be content in your presence. Lord, when your glory appears, my joy will be full. We honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Jesus journeyed from one town and village to another, preaching and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. Accompanying him were the twelve and some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Cusa, Susanna, and many others, who provided for them out of their resources. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well,
Magandang gabi po sa inyong lahat. And also those uh, fellow worshippers who are in other parts of the world. I would like to fo uh, follow, to continue this reflection on this uh, first reading from this beautiful letter of Paul to the Corinthian, to the Christians of Corinth. And uh, we have here today, actually the whole uh, chapter of chapter 15 of this first letter of Paul to the Corinthians is dedicated to this issue or topic of the resurrection of Christ and its implications especially also our own resurrection. So we see here a, a kind of an a argumentation presented by Paul. No. It is a it seems to be that uh, there were those who denied that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. No. In that time as also in our times now. And the uh, that reasoning that type of reasoning of Paul is set within a kind of a methodology popular during that time, the so-called the rabbinic uh, methodology, and constructed according to this uh, popular way of argumentation. They call it, for those who have studied logic in college, they, they must uh, uh, remember still this the reductio ad absurdum they would say or per absurdum argument to absurdity a form of argument that attempts to establish a claim by showing that the opposite scenario would lead to absurdity or contradiction and uh, Paul wants to show this uh, a kind of redundancy which the resurrection of Christ has in the life of the believer. So if one denies this, then the implications would be the absurdity of this, of this belief. No. So the negation, the denial of such implication which is our resurrection drugs with it the negation also of the resurrection of Christ if Christ has not reason so also we will not the efficacy of this would be denied also no So when one denies the resurrection of Christ, this drags with it the negation also of his glory, his own divinity, and therefore also our Christian faith. The denial of Christian faith brings with it also the denial of our own salvation and ultimately our hope. So all this therefore leads to absurdity as Paul would admonish because the church, the proof that uh, Paul would place is that the experience of the presence of the Spirit in the life of Christian has shown, has testified one thing, that the presence of the Spirit of the, the recent Lord has given freedom, liberation to people who believe liberation from evil. And this was the, one of the concrete proofs that indeed Christ is alive, Christ is risen. Our freedom as children of God. 
So, Christ is truly risen, working thus for the full recovery of God in that humanity which He assumed in His own incarnation. In other words, Paul tried really to place this, the resurrection of Christ, and argued that indeed Christ has risen and it becomes the very foundation of our faith because what would be the meaning of faith? What would be the meaning of life? What would be the meaning of uh, love, of hope in this world? If everything ends in the tomb, period, walana, what would be the meaning of life? No. So he wanted to show here that, yes, the Christ has reason, and there is reason to continue to hope, to love, to serve, to do what is good, to do what is honorable, because that goodness, that victory of Christ reigns. Dear friends, in the midst of our, of the challenges, the experience of uh, so many frustrations and difficulties, the death of our loved ones sometimes lead us to question buhay. And God, through especially through the witness of Paul who experienced really the risen Lord in his conversion, and he placed this as the foundation of our Christian life. The Eucharist, the Word of God proclaimed, has meaning because it has been guaranteed that the one who spoke this, the one who gave himself in the Eucharist, is alive, reason, and he has called us to participate precisely in this life. What a beautiful gift, what a beautiful truth to guide us to a slight in our journey that at times proved to be difficult and dark. The Mass, the Eucharist, is indeed a celebration of our faith in the risen Lord. What we receive is not a dead Christ. It is a risen Lord. This is signified, for example, I do not know if you pay attention to the, to the, to the Mass, because in the consecration, this is my body. The blood, the, 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 the bread and wine are consecrated separately denoting, for example, the death, the death of Christ on the cross, giving his body and blood no, to signify his death. But I do not know if you pay attention that the priest, after the consecration, before the communion, he places a piece of bread into the chalice to signify precisely that what we are going to receive is the, re the risen Lord. No meaning the body and blood together representing, signifying that Christ, that what we receive is the risen Lord. Dear friends, let our communion with the risen Lord in the Eucharist, with His word, powerful word, and the Eucharist, give us strength in our journey through life. Amen. Full of hope and confidence, we make our prayer to God the Father 
anxious for our for an increase of his presence in our life for every prayer let our response be use us for your work o lord use us for your work o lord that the church may continue to grow and be a symbol of justice love and truth in the world we pray use, use us, us for, for your, your work, work o lord, lord that as a community we may not be idle in our life of faith but every day seek god even in our difficulties and trials we pray use, use us, us for, for your work o lord, lord that children may grow in the ways of grace and mature into christ-like people we pray Use, Use us, us for, for your work, work o, o Lord. Lord, that the sick may be strengthened in their faith by uniting their sufferings with the suffering of Christ. We pray, Use, Use us, us for your Lord. work, O Lord, that our beloved dead may reap the fruits of peace, joy, and serenity in God's kingdom. We pray, Use us for your work, O Lord. For all of us, that we may remain healthy and strong to weather this ordeal physically, emotionally, psychologically, financially, and spiritually. May we not give in to fear or panic. May we be agents of love and service to those in need during this pandemic. We pray. Use us, us for, for your work, work O Lord. Lord. In the silence of our hearts, let us pray for our personal intentions. We pray, use, use us, us for, for your, your work, work, O Lord. Heavenly Father, help us grasp the importance of time in which we are living Open our hearts to your word so that we may always be bear fruit. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings of your people in honor of the passion of your holy martyrs, 
Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, and may the gifts that gave them courage under persecution make us too steadfast in all trials. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyrs, Cyprian and Cornelius, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of of me. The Mystery of Faith Till you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Onestor Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially those we remember in this Mass. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, Saints Cornelius and Cyprian, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who, who art, art in, in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Sasa uh -huh. 